Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I have to preface this review by saying that I don't actually know much about uh, gothic literature or horror. These are two genres I've not really read about or within, so I can't really speak to how this novel works within those genres, maybe what tropes it uses or what expectations it defies. Nevertheless, I feel like this book lived up to my very nebulous expectations of what a Mexican gothic horror novel should feel like, and I enjoyed it immensely. I think that this is a book that is very, very enjoyable for just that surface level, well-told story, but also it has layers and themes and commentary that really enrich it when you peel back that, and I don't think I'm going to even begin to scratch the surface of all the things you could talk about in this novel. Mexican Gothic is set in 1950s Mexico, and it follows a young woman named Noemi. She's essentially a socialite from a wealthy, privileged family. She is also a pretty modern, educated woman, and she's also a university student. Noemi is asked by her father to visit her cousin Catalina, who was recently married to a man they know nothing about. She's kind of disappeared, they haven't seen her in a while, and then they receive a very concerning letter letter from her that seems to them like she is mentally unwell, perhaps she's had a breakdown or a feverish illness, and Catalina's husband is very uncooperative when it comes to sharing her assessment and her medical care. So Noemi goes to actually visit her and see what's going on, and she's a very unwelcome guest in the Doyle family house. So she arrives at this decrepit Victorian mansion that literally sits on transplanted English soil. There's a graveyard out back, there's a lot of mist, and plenty of local sinister and tragic rumors about the Doyle family history. The Doyle family are Catalina's husband, Virgil, his sister, I believe, Florence, who is also the housekeeper, Florence's son, Francis, who is about the same age as Noemi, and then Howard, the family patriarch. And there's something off about all of these people, and something very creepy and strange is happening in the house. Catalina says that there's something in the walls, something listening to them, and then Noemi herself starts to experience strange things. The thing that I want to say about the house and its connection to the Doyle family is that this is one of the most outright recognizable cliches that this book is using, I think. Like, even I know about the creepy Victorian mansion and its atmosphere in horror and gothic novels. That's a thing. But here, it's a little bit different, I think, because it's so sharply contrasted with the surroundings. This is a very English family, a very English house, and the way that it looks and the way that everything is run within the house is completely at odds with the, with the local Mexican people, with their culture, with their family life. It is incredibly different from the life that Noemi knows, which is a lot of festivity and noise and conversation and close family connections. And when she comes to this house, it's like it's this dried out husk. It's dead inside. There is no life there, and it is suffocating and even more menacing, I think, than if it were just a creepy haunted mansion. It goes beyond that. This story is very much entwined with racism and eugenics. Um, Noemi is a dark-skinned Mexican woman, though importantly one who comes from a wealthy, privileged background, and she's not ashamed of her ancestry. She's not ashamed at all of her skin color, and she's also educated. She's an anthropology student. She is aware of the contemporary research and discussion on race. So when she arrives and Howard, the old white dude, <laughs> um, immediately aggressively starts questioning her about her skin color, questioning her about race and assimilation and eugenics, she's a little bit on an equal footing with him. She's able to have that conversation, but it's extremely uncomfortable. But you know immediately that breeding, and I guess 
purity of blood is really important to the Doyles. And is that just because they're racist or because of something else? You have to read the book to find out. <laughs> I also think there are themes here of loss of voice, um, the power and autonomy and control that women have over their own lives or what they don't have because of society and the legal system at the time. I mean, here we have Catalina, the woman who is overridden by her husband, her father-in-law, and her male doctor. She has no say in her own treatment and what is happening to her. Even Noemi, who is confident and educated and allowed a lot of personal freedom by her family, she too is constrained by what power women have at this time and place. Like, what can she realistically do to help her cousin, a woman who is in the control of her husband? That's a big deal here. I found myself most disturbed and horrified by Catalina's situation. Drugged, bed rest, isolation, depressive conditions, unable to communicate with or physically be with her own family. Very yellow wallpaper. And then there's also that implicit threat to Noemi's autonomy as well in the story. That created most of the tension and the the fear that I was feeling while reading this. It probably says a lot that this book has body horror and I was less disturbed by that than by what was happening to the women socially. That says a lot about how I interpreted the point of the story, I think. Now that I've described a bunch of stuff, I want to talk about other things, specific things that I really enjoyed about this, because I loved the complexity, I loved the nuance and all these things that the book was engaging with, but there are also some very specific things that I thought were just done very well here. The first is the character work. I went into this book knowing that I would probably enjoy it because of the characters, and that is because I've already read other books by Morona Garcia and I thought that she is just fantastic fantastic at writing realistic people, uh, people that you can sympathize with while also acknowledging that they are flawed, that they're not perfect. And that happened again in this novel. I really loved Noemi and Francis in particular. They are very complex, flawed people, and I was rooting for them the entire time. There's a lot that you could probably say about Francis in particular, but I will leave that discussion for some other time. I can't be here forever. Um, Virgil was a piece of work. I mean, seductive and terrifying and predatory. Howard is gross. <laughs> um, I even liked the depiction of Catalina and Florence, though I think that they are less clear, less fleshed out. I view them a bit more of genre archetypes, like archetypal characters that are used really well here. I also loved Noemi's personality in general. I like the type of person that she was, and it's very interesting that she's introduced in the very first scene of the novel, the only one that isn't from her perspective is from the perspective of her, her beau, her boyfriend at the time, and it paints this very unflattering picture of Noemi as this kind of flighty socialite who isn't super concerned with being nice to other people, I guess, and then it flips to showing you her life through her own eyes, and then it introduces you to some of her confidence and her education and that she stays true to something. She has a mission and she has beliefs and values and she doesn't compromise them. And that is a real strength that helps her throughout the book. At the same time, she has to acknowledge some of her own flaws and question whether she can use those to her own benefit in this terrifying situation she's landed in. I really liked that. I also really enjoy that she had character development, but not an unrealistic amount of change. I don't think it is all realistic for a person to be completely and utterly changed and to grow up after a single traumatic experience. It will change you, it will influence you, it might change the kinds of decisions you make in the future, but it doesn't make you a completely different person. So I felt like when Noemi came out the other side in the story, there was a loss of innocence. She learned some really tough things about the world and about people, and things would never be the same, but she wasn't a completely different person at that point. 
I also had the satisfaction of half guessing where this story was going to go. I'm not really sure how to describe this sensation, just that it's immensely satisfying to feel like you are intelligent enough to pick up on a lot of the clues and foreshadowing that an author has put into a book and then take those puzzle pieces and put them together and try to predict what's going to happen. That is sometimes the best thing about a book. Not that it leaves you guessing all the time, but that it gives you enough to sort of guess and then you have that satisfaction of having it confirmed for you, but maybe with a twist or going a bit further when the book actually lets you know what's going on. I think that some people might say that this book or books like it are too predictable, but there's a reason why you have tropes and conventions and familiar things in genres like this, because that's what people want and that's what makes it pleasurable to read a lot of the time. I don't know. Let me know if that makes sense. <laughs> To conclude, I feel like everything about this book really fell into place for me. It really weaves together the time period, the place. I think the setting in Mexico is really important, especially with, you know, combining that, intersecting that with all of the other discussions like race also being talked about in it. Um, and that it pulls all these things together, the influences of the different genres, it really, really works. So I think I'd have to end this review with a really hearty would recommend. I enjoyed this. And I have to say at this point that Moreno Garcia is on my auto buy list. I think I'm going to just immediately try to read everything she writes, and she writes across such a variety and a range of genres and types of stories. I love that she doesn't repeat herself so much, and, that, and yet, at the same time, there are definitely strengths I recognize in every single one of her books, like her stamp on it that I love. So anyway, if you have also read this book, I would love to know what you think about it. Leave me some comments down below, or if you have anything to say about other books by Moreno Garcia. I have yet to read Signal to Noise. I will get around to that eventually. So thank you very much for watching this review, and I'll be back to talk to you again soon, and until then, bye.